due to unfortunate technical difficulties, the first two hours of this particular session are corrupt and cannot be salvaged. However, a summary up to this point in time was with the last session, the party has completed their trial, though they have lost the Quinn due to the overwhelming power difference. And then they were uh -huh. once again blessed by, and when I say blessed, I mean they have received Alexander and the Monarch's trust as he sent them back on their way to complete their mission. Yet, once they returned to the city and they went to Cuban's shop just to see how he was doing, they came upon a situation of where he was being attacked by a gargoyle and some demonic Frankenstein-like construct. And when they helped him out of that situation, he then apprised the party of the council that very, very much wants them dead has grown desperate as they have been attacking very specific people that the party have been working with since their arrival in the city. Very key points of interest have been attacked, some of the team has been hurt, others have managed to fend off their assailants. And where we are now, the party have made their way over to the hospital to assist Regis, Isla, Iris, Francesca, and Cynthia and Zero from the current attacks upon this location. Henry, in particular, is very, very, very angry over the fact that the demonic friends that he have been assisting for his time here have been attacked and he is not pleased in the slightest. Additionally, as the party have made their way around the city and have been helping people, they have taken out some of the construct on their way here. They have noticed these strange tower-like structures that were definitely not there the last time they were rooftop hopping and Henry and Yashua have acquired new weapons from their previous encounter. And this is where our story will begin. We'll resume from. Okay. Um, from where we left off, uh, you said you were gonna walk past everyone and target the enemies at the bottom? Chris? Yes. Yes. Okay. As I was doing earlier, I'm going to, uh. Oh, look at that. Uh. I'm going to. I did a strength roll. I don't know if Rika will allow it, but I'm gonna grab this vampire character with, uh. Uh, let's say. Where, where was my gargoyle weapon equipped to? Left or right? Uh, I believe I said your right arm. Alright, so I'm grabbing him with my right arm. Dragging this guy through the wall. At the same time, while I'm dragging him. I'm letting out shots. To his throat. Okay. Um, as you do that, you... Here, read just say, <clears throat> I'm glad you're here. And normally, I charge you for the hole in the wall, but I'll excuse it this time. Kill that goddamn thing. Oh, with pleasure. And I ask Regis, uh, this this goddamn thing is capable of flight. Um. We can find out. Okay, so I let out the rest of my shots. And I just toss them out the window where I came from. And when you throw it out the window, 
Regis moves faster than you've ever seen him move before. He shoves his right arm forward, and you see a ball of dark fire shoot out of it and crash into the creature. And it very quickly disintegrates. He says, <clears throat> I changed my mind. I don't want to know if it can fly or not. Now we will uh, temporarily seen swap over to Osiris, Francesca, and Iris. And Osiris is going to rush the creature with the shield, or the construct with the shield. And she is going to slip past it and kick its feet out from under it. And just before it hits the ground, she is going to kick it towards Francesca while releasing uh, False Holy at the same time. And then... Really like the name of that attack, False Holy. And then Francesca is going to kick it back at Osiris while casting Thundaga at the same time. And then Osiris kicks it over to Iris, who power drives it into the floor. I'm gonna put that over here, and I'm gonna turn this upside down. And then the other construct that is nearby them is going to hastily shuffle over to Iris, who, at the beat of a heart, turns around and releases a very potent flame from her mouth and burns the thing to cinders. Yikes. And then we will move over to... Henry, Isla, and Igni. You don't have to worry about bad breath if you can shoot fire out of it. True. So they're all vampires, you think? Not all of them. But most of them. Yeah, some of them are. So this one in front of me is a vampire? Yes. <clears throat> Henry looks at Igni and just says they've heard our friends and lets off a giant flare of Fyra right at the vampire in front of us. Alright. Igni follows suit with what you said with what you said and casts her own Fire as a follow-up to yours, while Isla takes several scalpels and she throws them at the enemy before you. However, what seems like her throwing around five or so, the closer they get, the more they split apart and suddenly five becomes fifty and fifty becomes eighty as they continue to split and pierce the enemy in front of her and it is now pinned to the wall and it is burning. As for the enemy on the opposite side of you all, Isla asks you to cast your Fira spell again and this time she's going to throw her knives or her scalpels through the fire. Do 
be good. Uh, Did he mute himself? That's a good question. Take that as a yes. All right. Weird. My computer went to sleep mode on its own. That's funny. Yeah. Even though I clicked the uh, attack. <laughs> Roll 20. Okay, well. We'll just say it happened anyway. And... The same thing happens again. Except this time... Seemingly from nowhere. Uh, she throws a very large dagger at the enemy that as it flies through the air it splits into four and each dagger is lodged in well there's one dagger in the right shoulder the left shoulder the left knee and the right knee as this one is now pinned to this wall the, the far wall from where you are standing and it too is on fire Are we going to end up bur burning this whole hospital down? I hope not. Mm. You can deal with that in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. As for... Drava and Cynthia... Cynthia... has some orbs in her hand that look like they contain some very potent magic that also appears to be mixed with gunpowder <clears throat> as she tosses one into the air and she uses her tail as a baseball bat to send it straight at the hooded creature and it gets lodged inside of where its head would be since there is a void there and just before the first one detonates Drava then takes it upon herself to rush over to the creature and use her uh, serpent slice ability a few times before casting ruin on it and sending it using the knockback wow that's a crit using the set of knockback from her essentially putting ruin into her hand and punching it into the creature use knockback of that to flip backwards onto the wall and then use air crash to send it flying out of the building and then when Drava makes her return uh, back inside of the area, since wow, two two crits in a row. Uh, Cynthia Sus throws the other bomb at the creature, and it explodes in a wide array of colors in the air. And then Osiris speaks up. So, it looks like things have gotten exponentially worse since we were last here. And Regis cuts everyone off from saying whatever they're about to say. It's a, forget about that. We gotta get these fires out. Henry just puts his finger up in the air and shoots a fireball at the, the sprinkler. Smart. Drava does the same with where she's standing. And in due time, the fires are 
put out. Well, that happens. Since I know the thing, sprinklers are going to... Uh, put off the fires. I'm going to cast this on myself so I could dry myself because I don't like being wet. <laughs> Henry pats Igni's head. Francesca, she takes a moment to take a take a deep breath and the aura around her begins to eventually fade out as she returns to her regular auraless state yet there is still a bit of lightning crackling around her where she stands uh we should check on all we should check on the patients see if no one uh got in hurt in this scuffle Regis says the only patient that was here was a young man Silas as we before we were attacked just sent everyone home and for whatever reason the creature seemed to be after him specifically because he just started to return to the waking world once those markings on him were gone as they quite literally faded away right in front of us. And in that case, he has he has information or has something that they want or they want to keep him quiet permanently. Henry just whispers to Diablo. Were these some of your curse markings? No. No, they were not. Can you tell whose they were? If we go and investigate? That's going to be... a bit of a conundrum. Due to the fact that... that... The curse energy that was on that young man was different than anything I've seen in this realm so far. So, pinpointing who and what it is is going to take way more time than what we can afford right now. We can worry about that later. Uh, where do you know where he was escorted to? This guy could be in danger. Regis doesn't say anything, but he motions for you to follow to where Silas's room is. No, well, you won't do that. Zero. Announces that he is going to have some of his drone or some of his nano drones repair the window and do another uh, surveillance check on the area. As Francesca announces that she is going to have to get serious again, and that has been quite a while since he has gotten. As serious as she need, well, as she's about to get, and she lightning teleports out of the hospital. <clears throat> and when you all make it to Sil Silas's room, he wakes up and he says that. 
while he was physically unconscious, mentally, he was awake the entire time as for how affected by the curse he was, he was having to fend off having his very spirit being disturbed during that whole ordeal and that when the curses fade away he heard the voice of a man that he had never met before and the only thing that he remembers from the voice is that he sounded incredibly pretentious and stuck up as if he known everything about anything. And Regis is scratching his head trying to put a name to a description but he's not his mind is too occupied with other things to focus in on that one aspect okay vague but it's something can we ask where he got cursed He remembers where exactly that happened. When you ask him that, he says that he was visiting a friend on the almost outskirts of the city when he remembers being attacked. And the description that he gives sounds very similar to the area in which you first had your major encounter encounter with the cult when you were rooftop hopping for your first official mission from Francesca And Regis, the, lo the longer he thinks about how to deal with the situation at hand, you notice that his hair is starting to pulsate. So it's his regular hair color and it flashes a lighter shade of red. And that just continually happens over and over and over as he is getting angrier and angrier and angrier. <sighs> is there any other places that are being attacked? Iris and Isla walk over to you all and they say, as far as we know right now, no. This is the only place that we've received um, threats and transmissions about, but this should have been the last of it, at least until someone else decides to do something. And when she finishes her sentence, Zero returns with his drones circling his head as he states that oh oh this is this just went from worse to exponentially worse I'm not sure who how and when those towers got installed but my drones just finished descrambling them and not only 
have the recent events been transmitted somewhere to likely be used against us. I found a transmission of Chief's mo mother, Jin, being interrogated over what she knows. And that too is probably going to be used against you all in the trial. And at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if all of us in this room were to stand trial tomorrow. We're not going to a trial tomorrow. I... I am going to eliminate a specific target that I was told to. There's no trial for me. Just bloodshed. I don't know what the rest of you have in mind. Who is this target of yours? And where did you get this target from? A few monarchs and Alexander. Who are these monarchs and who is Alexander? Alright. So, I start explaining of our journey to the Spire. And one of the council members actually being called... What was it, Riku? Vaughn? Uh-huh. That Vaughn is the reason why all this shit is happening. And is it, since I don't remember if it's a he or she, is working under Shinryu. Or along with Shinryu. And they pretty much have the majority of the council under their thumb. When you say the name Vaughn, Zero seemingly stops paying attention to what you said, but then you hear him exclaim at the top of his lungs, I knew it! I knew from the very beginning that rat bastard had something to do with everything going wrong in the city for Chief's job, the it feels very, very good to know that I was right. And I can't wait to see that son of a bitch pay for what he's done. In due time, he, or whatever it is, will pay with blood. I'll make sure of it. Okay, so with that being established, how are you going to go about this elimination process of yours? Well, assuming that they're able to capture me, which I doubt, I'll just simply let them. And we'll go through, you know, the procedure of their trial. I'll let them have their fun. And then I'll just cut loose and start targeting specific individuals that get in my way, eventually making my way to Vaughn. Though it's not going to be easy, I'm aware. Unless you have a better idea, I'm all ears. Well, the only issue with that plan is that there is a s special chamber that Boss told you about that Henry knows all too well, the quote-unquote museum that is disguised where its, its true purpose is that of a what is known as a council slash judgment hall for those that need to stand trial for whatever it is that they've done that's going to be the only problem is you don't know how to get there and you need to be specially escorted into there 
by us. Aside from everything else, depending on what's said and how things go down, I don't care what you do. Just don't get yourself killed. That's all I care about. Hmm. How much time do we have until the trial? We're gonna need time to prepare. Also, we have to make sure that no civilians got caught up into this too. And this is when Cynthia chimes in and she says, Well, rest assured, absolutely no civilians. We've done many, many checks. Absolutely no civilians have been caught up in this whatsoever. As for how much time is left until the trial, there's about <sighs> about 16 hours from now. Well, in that case, if there's nothing else, I'm gonna go mentally prepare since I'm already physically and equipment-wise already prepared. For just about anything. Okay. Well, it goes without saying, you all should probably get some degree of rest since you all have been on your feet ever since you've left here to go find clues and answers and whatnot about the other areas and such, which I'm assuming you found more than enough information for. Indeed. Enough to motivate someone to kill another individual, mind you. Anyways. Osiris speaks up. While you all do whatever it is you're going to do, I am going to follow close behind Lee with your boss and assist her in whatever she may or may not need. And with that, being established, Osiris vanishes in a puff of smoke. Henry walks back in from his breather from outside. And walks up to Regis. What do you want? You're the big boss of healing, right? Yes, where is this, go where is this going? We're going to go somewhere dangerous. I need better healing for our group. I need to keep them safe. And how exactly do you want me to help you with this? I need your help to better my cure spell. As Henry shows him his cure spell. And you want this to improve in what way? I need to get stronger to make sure everybody's at full health all the time. I have something that may be of assistance to you, but I need to find it. Uh, 
Yeah, I just noticed how many stories up are we? Uh, about ten. All right. Well, I'll catch you guys in the motel. See, there's a like a broken window. I just hop out of it. Okay. You hear a sonic boom because you know I just took off. Right. Drevo, Hoping I'm not shattering more windows. <laughs> Drava follows suit behind you as Regis has dove into his office for a brief moment and he is looking for the thing he said he would give to Henry. Henry just sits down in the chair with Igni and starts chatting with Igni. You did a good job today. As I pet her, pat her head. Her wings flutter in excitement as a response, as she doesn't try to swat you away or anything like how she normally does. Ten out of ten. Regis comes back with a slip of paper uh, bundled up in a very pristine looking envelope with a wax seal no less and he hands it to you he says I'm not sure how long it's going to take for you to comprehend this but this may assist you in your healing endeavors. Henry opens it up very carefully and with a look of determination that normally he doesn't have, he starts reading it. Let's see if you have a good roll on see how fast you can learn it. Yep. So what do I have to roll for this? If he rolls a 20, I'm gonna laugh. Come on, baby, give us a 20. Uh, let me type out what it does for you. What the spell is, real quick. Oh, great universe. Give Chris a 20. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the universe is going to give you a 20 if I, if I directly ask like that. I got to feel it. First, let's see what the spell is.
All right, there, there you go. go. And as for <clears throat> what you need to roll in order to read and comprehend it, you need to roll a a 3d4, but the 4 is 4 hours. <clears throat> D4. That's it? Mm -hmm. Just a 3d4? Right, so this is going to take you 8 hours to... Eight in-game hours to read and comprehend how to use that spell. So basically, just you going to sleep. And with nap that, time. With that, I'm going to transition the scene over to the motel. Henry flies out the window to the hotel. And then move this here. And Once every two turns. Jeez. Oh, then I get Cura also? Okay. I'm you. You're me. It's me from the past. <laughs> Gasp. No! Oh, I was gonna play rock paper scissors. The winner gets, to, the winner gets to exist. The loser dies. <laughs> ah. Too long of a day this was. Two five one. Five. Just gonna make my way over to the reception. Wait, where is the reception desk? Right up here. And when you say too long of a day, Drava says more like four days, because that's how long our mission was supposed to be, but it didn't feel like that. It sure didn't. But I'm mentally fatigued. I knock on the counter and just let them know that we're just checking in for the night. Or the day. I have no idea what time it is right now. But what time is it? I look at the tombstone. What's it say? It is... 9.30 a.m. It's morning? Ugh. Yeah, y'all have been running pretty hard without any regard for time or rest ever since y'all set out on your first mission. Anyways, I just leave a bag of gill. I don't even bother checking in. I'm just gonna go crash in this room. All right. Java follows suit and returns to her own room. And when she gets inside she notices that osiris for whatever reason is sleeping on the floor near the entrance to the room interesting maybe she feels safer sleeping with drava who knows anyways i'm gonna go sleep <laughs> LB energy. What is it? Oh, limit break energy. Okay. Gonna, you know, uh, unequip my clothing, so I'm just wearing just boxers and just hop into bed. Actually, wait. I'm gonna go brush my teeth with a plasma broom. <laughs> plasma brush. <laughs> wait. 
You went to my room this time. He did say he was just diving into a room. That's my personal room. And he just walks into Yasha's old room. This explains the dark energy in the room. Anyways, I'm done washing up. Sleep time. Igni and Henry both sleep in the bed. Igni kicks you out and makes you sleep on the couch again. I think we're past that point. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Draver's room, she dives into the bathroom, she undresses, she washes herself, and she takes the time to notice just how fatigued she truly is with everything going on. And when she walks by Osiris again, she notices that she's not like in any form of cover or anything. She's just spread eagle, in this case spread phoenix, on the floor. <laughs> and is spread phoenix. And appears to be resting very soundly and comfortably. And Drava takes she takes the cover off of the bed, leaves a note saying sorry, tears it in half and puts half of it on Osiris, and uses Eroga to gently lift her up and move her over to the couch. And then Drava leaps into the bed and everyone begins to rest for the night. Oh, day. And with their scene fading to black and then resuming at a later point in time, we... Since we're in dreamland... Gotta fight Mayor. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I, I gotta do my trial. Hmm. I was waiting for this. You sure you wanna do that now? Hey, it's worth it. I mean, aren't I supposed to do it soon? Well, it wasn't so much of a soon, it was just in the future. You know what? I'll do it after this conflict. I feel like he's going to kick my ass now. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> He's a chief for a reason. Very true. Very true. All right. So, you will wake up multiple, multiple hours later, and let's just say that you all have already gotten yourselves together and are dressed and whatnot and before you even collectively step outside of the motel you notice that uh, Francesca Zero and Cynthia are already are already waiting for you all and have a car ready for you Ah, an escort. Lovely. Yeah, we're not... We're not taking any more chances with this shit. So, the moment we step out into the building, am I going to get handcuffed? 
No. I'm slightly disappointed when they said no. <laughs> Why would you expect us of all people to handcuff you? Well, standard procedure. It is a trial after all. I More suppose that way. I can understand your reasoning given that we all don't do trials the same. Yeah, the trials where we come from, we make sure that the, the person being prosecuted doesn't move an inch. They're stuck in stasis, though they're still conscious and able to defend themselves that they can't move. Interesting. Safety mechanism. If they're found guilty and to be executed, we just close the field on them and they get crushed. How very intense that you handle things like that where you all come from ah don't worry it's 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 not painful since it's instant it's very similar to disintegration i see i see well would you care to go over everything you've learned since we sent you out, since it'll be a while before we get there. Okay. Well, I'm sure Zero filled you in on some details. I only told them what you told me earlier, to be fair. I have to go through the summaries to remember what we've been through. <laughs> but let's say in general, the three of us explain what we went through and what we learned. Basically, we went to the tower. The tower isn't what we thought it was. It hells the holy divine beast, Alexander. But even before meeting Alexander, we had to go through a trial to fight Alteria, the dragon. And even fighting that Divine Beast, it was only their illusion. And then... <laughs> and then we had to fight a psychotic, battle-sexual woman. And then her master, too, on top of that. One of the four monarchs there of Alexander. Then we finally got to meet Alexander. And then we had to fight her again. Yeah. But we Corrupted, then we had to fight Quill, uh, Quinn, except Quinn destroyed us. Well, actually, you guys got knocked out. I was still standing, but it hurt like a bitch, but. <laughs> Basically, broke my a load of bullshit. Then we went and met Cuban, and Cuban stopped, and Cuban wasn't there. Then we met, uh, contacted his contact, and then got teleported into a cave, rescued Cuban, got teleported to the the bar. We jumped through too many clubs, And then made it to the hospital after healing everybody at the club to make sure they're okay. Alright. There was a Long dragon that was being roasted we, that we saved. That was fun. I wonder how that dragon's doing. I wonder how Charles is doing. Ah, Charles, that frogman. What a chad. <sighs> well, this is Francesca talking. Well, that is sure is a lot. And I wasn't expecting you all to say that you've met divine beasts and beings in that side of the area, but whatever helps out, I guess. So what else did you learn from Alexander? 
the truth of this whole conflict, and uh, I kind of look around, kind of look around, and I kind of don't want to say it, but since she's probably hiding her own identity, but they probably know, but I'm not too sure. Like her actual, her actual name, I mean, and who she really is. Yeah, I know you're getting that. So I, I say I've learned more about this conflict and Vaughn and um, who Vaughn is going up against. As I try to hint at her. And she 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 nods in a manner that says, "Go on." You forgive me. I forget that. I forget because I haven't read the summaries. Uh, for real? Yeah, like I actually haven't read the last two summaries since you've took your time writing them down. Um, Vaughn is working towards not only uh, dethroning. Uh, Francesca from her position but he's also been working alongside Shinryu because Shinryu promised him power in exchange for helping him helping him cultivate all these souls to quote unquote protect them from the quote unquote threat Yeah, let's just say I explained all of that to her. Apologies, that's uh something I should have gotten to read, but I've completely forgot. That's my fault. Okay. And I missed that explanation. You once again hear hear Zero say, I fucking I fucking knew it. I knew it. E Ever since that dude got here, things have been going horribly, horribly wrong for too many people. It's just that he already has so many people under his thumb at this point, let alone his frequent visiting to the other districts and getting whoever to join his cause and Francesca says in response yes it surely does seem like you were correct in this situation much to everyone's dismay and Jerry speaks up is that your way of saying that whenever Zero is right about these kinds of things, they're much worse than what they actually are? And Cynthia says, yes, that is exactly what that means. Oh boy. So, and then it's Francesca talking. So, about this assault plan of yours what exactly is involved with this well we were asked to eliminate Vaughn and ev anyone that's working alongside him directly under Shinryu by Alexander and the monarchs that work under him Usually I question some of these uh, hit contacts, but this time around I didn't. Hmm. All right. Uh, 
are you against us eliminating Vaughn? We could capture him if you have something to say to him. No, not at all. If that bastard is working with the dragon that keeps eating entire dimensions, I don't want that son of a bitch alive anymore. Just my, asking, just in case. My only concern is whether or not how easy this assault plan of yours will turn out in the end. Oh, it's not going to be. But we don't have a but we don't have any other choice. It's either we gather our forces and attack from the front, or my personal favorite, attack from within. Understandable. Now since you all have been No, wait. Before I say that, how long has it been since you received this information from Alexander? Uh, under two hours, I would guess. No, uh, we've been inside the dim we've been ex we've been inside Al Alexander's dimension for what six days, but in the outside world, it was only thirty minutes. Hmm. So that's... In a sense... An ample amount of time to... Formulate a battle strategy, I would assume. There's something I need to know first before we start the assault is... I know there are these, uh, fuck, what were they called again? These counts. The, the, for some reason, I'm forgetting what they're called. The council members? Anyways, I need to know which, which are working with Vaughn and others that are being held against their will. Well... The one key figure being held against their will at this moment in time is my mother. As for the others, I'm sure that those in the cybernetic district probably aren't being held against their will as they are more stubborn than some of us over here, but those in the other district, since they like to control their citizens with death, with death and iron fist rulings, I'm not all that convinced that they aren't being held against their will either. We'll find out when we get there, and I'll do my best to point them out to you. As Zero pipes up, you also have the communicators I gave you, right? I materialize it. This thing, right? It's a little banged up, but I think it still functions. He examines it. Yeah, it's still good. Okay, with well this... I'm gonna have to... Try to do it as inconspicuously as possible. But, yeah. We can... Talk to you all through these. As after he says that, the car stops... He says, all right, we're here. Whatever happens, at this point, happens. 
but we're going to get out of this and things are going to be resolved for the better. I have no doubt in my mind it won't. Zero opens the door, well, opens all the doors in the car simultaneously. As when you step out, you take note of every single civilian that you all have helped out and assisted since you've been here, alongside every single ally you have met on the way here, standing outside of your destination, and they are offering you varying forms of encouragement and hope in situation and as you all descend the stairs to your hall of judgment the cheers and the cries of those you have helped resonate in your minds and i get a power boost motivation Oh, you'll get it. You will get hey, it. Hey, let's go. And when you all make it inside, you notice <gasps> the Elden Ring. You notice seven figures in the room. As at first you only see six, but then the last one appears right in the center of the room. Why, hello oh, you there. have to wear a monocle, eh? Why, hello there, travelers who have been causing problems for our city. It's so nice to finally meet you. My name is Vaughn. And these, in combination with Francesca and her mother... Are the council members here to put you to trial for the atrocities and the overall disturbances that you have collectively caused since you've been here? So, who would like to plead their case first? I'm quite curious. I wonder what kind of crimes I've committed since I've never been to this world before. I apologize. Could you care to elaborate? I'm... I'm a tourist, you see. Quite fascinated with this magical world you have going on here. You claim yourself to be a tourist, yet we have record of you going in and out of the city and interacting with a particular cult that has been a very, very large thorn in, our, in all of our sides for the last few months. And if you choose not to believe me, please court your eyes to the floor right beneath your feet and as Vaughn excuse me, snaps his fingers what appears to be a mirror opens up right beneath your feet and you see a clear as day recording of you all uh, traveling through the realm and encountering, well, before you knew it was part of the cult, encountering the cult, and to you all at first, they appeared to be uh, travelers in need, and it looks clear as day that you all assisted them and helped fix their injuries, and they gave you a particular medallion that Francesca told you to keep hidden when you first showed it to her. 
These are the civilians that were wounded. Trevor speaks up. No, this... This never happened. If you look at where we are, this is where we got attacked the first time. I'm over here playing dumb. <laughs> hmm... Quite accurate. You know, I find quite fascinating how convincing this uh, CGI looks. And I whisper to Diablo. Mm, define whisper, like physically like, whisper? No, no, mentally talk to him. Oh, yeah, they can't read your mind. Okay, so I speak to Diablo. This has to be some kind of magic, isn't it? This recording. Oh, oh without a doubt. This is... <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yep, this is... This is mental manipulation at its finest. You wanna break the curse and have a little fun? And mm. see how their reactions happen when they replay it? Not yet. Let them run their mouths a bit longer to see exactly what they wind up saying before we have fun with them. Since I'm right beside you and hearing this little whispering you two are going about, I was going to mention the same thing that Diablo said, let them have their fun. Can we do the same kind of thing, play my memories back on a screen? That can be you just have to give me a minute or so. Take your time. We'll we'll play this out a little bit. Say less. Okay, I'm gonna play along to his uh uh them assuming that we're helping these uh cult leaders. Cause in the end, doesn't matter what I say, I'm still gonna murder this fucker. What's his name? This one? Vaughn. Is that Vaughn? Yep. That's Vaughn. I'm going to steal his monocle. He didn't say his name to us, did he? Oh, he did. He did. Okay. You're going to steal his monocle? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to steal his monocle. <laughs> I don't like his face. He, he, he has that condescending look on his face, and I don't like it. <laughs> While this is going on, can I activate the, the text spell? for traps. Mm. Now you see me walking towards the little mirror, right? Sure. And you see me just crouching and taking a better look at it? Huh. Well, Henry's doing that. Well, uh, Yashua's doing his little... Well... Thing. That's unexpected. I thought there were civilians. Huh. That... And you see Yashua just play dumb and just shrugs. That's my mistake. I didn't know there were uh, cultists, was it? Your... This is Vaughn speaking. Your attempts at playing unknowledgeable are wasted here. No, really. I'm not playing dumb. It's just if if these are people that we helped, shouldn't they be brought forward to testify as such? Granted, they won't. <laughs> and I'm over here thinking <laughs> they won't be here because we killed them. <laughs> Henry speaks up. If I remember right, weren't all the cultists just... You are... Just normal civilians converted? Yeah, I remember being told that most of these cultists were held against their will. So, of course, being as the good people we are, we try to set them free. Granted, there were some that retaliated against us and we had to defend ourselves. When you all say that, Vaughn then motions over behind him and this individual 
steps forward with a crystal that, when crushed, plays a voice recording of the testimony, or well, testimonies, of those that were shown in the video. And they say things uh. along the lines of, oh, this group threatened us and a after assisting us and they told us that they had some plans and endeavors that they needed to act upon and varying degrees of information like that though if you were to perform a perception role you might be able to point out something out of the ordinary and Henry as for your detect spell you notice out the corner of your eye a magical spike trap right next to Yashua's foot. And then you notice to your left that there is some form of a ghastly wall right next to you that if touched, you will it looks like you'd be very heavily poisoned by it. Henry whispers through the Diablo communication. In uh, our mind that's too. the link we have? Yeah, our link. Y Yashua, don't step to your side. There's spikes, and to my left is a poison gas wall. I. They set up traps already. Okay, so for future reference, let, let, let's call this brain talk. This is Diablo link. <laughs> so, so yeah, we link to each other, and I uh, could you specify where on my side? My left or right? Your right side. Right of ah. you, if you step there, there's spikes. Ah, I see. Much obliged. I don't think they would hurt you much. Maybe we should use this to our advantage. Mm hmm. Yeah. If I'm pretty uh, sure in a trial, we shouldn't be getting hurt by the enemy. Here, uh, I'm just going to make a mental note. Spike trap right here. Can you make a little gas smoke emblem beside me? I think I should have an, an image of that. Somewhere. I just made like a little X on my on my screen where the trap is with, with the rehab? brush. With the brush, yeah. That's what I'm doing. That's yours, uh, Chris. Oh, that's how big it is? Holy crap. Can you guys see the X mark I made with the brush? Yeah. yeah. I'm okay. just doodling a poison gas. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like freaking chemical fusion going on over there. That's what he said. It was very deadly gas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I rolled perception. I don't know if I pick up anything, Mr. Uh, GM. As you were... Hearing the quote unquote testimonies, you pick up on the fact that their voices are very, very shaky, almost as if they are being threatened to say what they are saying. Henry also speaks up. So, if these are testimonies of the cultists, couldn't they be lying? Or are you taking the cultists' side? Vaughn. As a soon-to-be permanent council member, I must take the needs of anyone who comes to any figure of authority with the utmost seriousness. So... You're going to take the cultist side, which you're saying is our enemies? When these individuals approached me... No, no, have... no. You just said you're accepting the enemy of everybody in this room. You're not, really you not? A, you're not really painting a good picture for yourself to be a judge, aren't you? I never said mm. I was intending to be a judge. Well... So you're saying you're siding with the people who hurt our citizens in all our wards? Are you not? 
what I have said was in a situation where someone in any level of distress, regardless of their affiliation, come to us, they are to be taken seriously. And these individuals in particular have since relinquished their ways long before they approached me. This is not to say that we have not been keeping an extremely watchful eye over them. So where are they? Vaughn snaps his fingers and they appear right behind him. Does this answer your inquiry? It doesn't because I can't get a good look on their faces. Yeah, bring them a little bit closer. Vaughn motions for them to approach close enough to where they are standing right in front of you. So oh, this is a trial, you say. And as it, Henry starts speaking, in his mind he's like, Diablos, are you ready? You hear a an affirmative grunt from him in response. So Henry puts up his hand, it's my turn. And he snaps. And a giant mirror pops up again. Playing the original meeting. And on this magical mirror, everyone in the room can directly see a playback of your memories of the situation at hand. And things are very, very different from what was originally shown and the testimonies and the people that gave those testimonies are very much dead in your memory. Oh, now God. this is exactly what I remembered. Now the people in front of me, hmm. Last I checked, I killed all three of you. Illusion? Magic, perhaps? You... I know that the guy on the right is uh, not as tall as he's supposed to be disguising as. The guy on the left uh, doesn't have the matching eye colors. Spot on with the one in the middle. So, would you like to defend yourself, Vaughn? And once you say that, the council member to the left, the android-esque creature, approaches and says, What is the meaning of this? You told us that these individuals were causing problem after problem because your special operations team were supposedly tailing them. Yet, this demonologist used the same memory replay spell that you did and his are extremely different than what was just played. He can blame it at a fabrication, but you cannot fabricate memories, at least not minds. Henry walks up to the the android and says, and bows down and says, "You're one that we could trust." And after you say that, Drava looks out the corner of her left eye and she points over to Francesca's mom and she says would you also care to explain why Jin is currently being held hostage in this whole ordeal to which Vaughn speaks up and says oh that is because not only has she been directly working with you all, she has been relaying information 
to everyone that wants to see the city burn. Remember, you're the one giving false information, Vaughn. Uh, anyone <sighs> roll perception. I don't care who. Dear, oh. dear. Perception. Actually, Rick, roll. You have a better roll than me. <laughs> Copy that, brother. Haha, <laughs> Rick, roll. Rick, roll. Ah! <laughs> Never gonna one. give you up. Never gonna no let you down. With that 15 perception. Uh, you look over to Vaughn for his next response, and for a very split moment, you see the bottom left corner of his left eyebrow twitch and then Nerf. all of you hear the ringing of a bell Bing. henry quickly we grab oh, our stasis devices yeah henry <laughs> grabs his stasis device and activates it same and upon activation Everything in the room uh, ceases movement. Well, everything except Vaughn ceases movement. All the time comes to a grinding halt. And you notice that his eye color was slowly beginning to change. And the android councilman uh, demands that he continues to explain himself, but yet he gets no response from Vaughn. Henry speaks up to the android councilman and says, get back. This is going to be bad. <sighs> Trust me. I just sigh and say... In the name of all this holy, yada yada yada, in Alexander's name, you are sentenced to death. And the council member that is unprofessionally sitting on a table uh, quickly runs in front of you and demands what you are about to do. And asks you, do you understand the gravity of what you are about to commit? Before he even does anything, I call up Diablos. I just sigh, and I say, please stand aside. If you value, you're actually... Never mind. Don't Get in my way, that. I will put you to the dirt. I have no quarrels with you. And then, once you say that... Uh... You, you do summon Diablos, and I'll expand him in a second. Mm -hmm. You do that, and then Zero steps forward and has his drones surrounding both himself, and they are putting up a wall between him and the other guy standing next to Vaughn. Francesca bolts over and disengages the restraints on her mother, while Cynthia stands behind both Drava and Yashua, weapons drawn, ready for anything. Okay. And the I don't think uh, this guy, whatever his name is, doesn't understand the gravity of the situation we're in. So I think he's on oh. our side. I think he's on Vaughn's side. Yeah, just knock him out. Don't kill him. I'm not going to even knock him out. I'm going no, to no, no, thing. no, no, no. I'm talking about this guy here. Oh, yeah. I'm going to do a simple thing. Yeah, he probably doesn't know what's going on, so just knock him out. Well, I call him. If you trust Vaughn so much, why don't you come step right here? See all the traps that he set up already. 
and he at well he says in genuine shock and confusion traps what what are these traps that you speak of Bond wants all of us dead in here there's uh, no just a way. moment he wants us and as he is walking toward the specified location that you pointed at he activates the trap and is thrown across the room uh, Henry speaks up if any of you want to side with Vaughn that's what he does to you originally I was gonna just show him while he's standing in front of me say no. you know there's a trap yeah. here and I just you know drop a bullet casing and the spike will go off but yeah you could hurt them with their own traps no hurt them with Vaughn's traps now, if anybody wants to detect who casted that bell trap, go ahead. I'm pretty sure it'll lead straight to Vaughn. The woman in the far left corner of the room approaches you all, and she gives her side of everything that's been going on, and she explains to you all that her position was at risk and she was being continually threatened that if she did not corral her own citizens of her land to do what Vaughn says, he would, in his own terms, uh, enact and impose his will upon what he needs to happen. He and... bows down to her and says for her to stay by Frenchie and her mother. And for the android to stay there too. She moves over, the android follows suit, and this fey like creature um, is standing there in shock but you can see that she was in the process of drawing a weapon. Henry screams out, drop it, and get behind us. She is attempting to drop said weapon, yet upon taking another look at her, you see that there are glowing glyph marks along her arm and her hand that are not allowing her to drop her weapon. She's being forced to use her weapon against her will. She's being manipulated, I mutter. So this one at the back? Yep. And upon noticing this, Drava shoots past Vaughn and over this magic circle on the ground and musters all the strength she can to try and s forcefully swat the weapon out of the woman's hands and she hits her hand she hits her hands on the woman's hands but instead of the weapon flying uh, the woman is moved instead as Drava shouts that the weapons are magically bound to her hands. No matter what she does, they will not leave her grip. Incapacitate her then. Put her to sleep. Just don't harm her. Henry Drava. screams out, this is another one of Vaughn's deceptions. I materialize my weapons. And I'm slowly walking towards Vaughn, but I'm not... Henry's Thank walking you. up to Vaughn also, and doesn't I'm, even need a weapon. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't want to get into the circle, because we don't know what it is. Inner demon. Hold, before you do that, Drava shoots a shoots an underpowered ruin spell at the Fey Woman, and she seemingly falls unconscious. And as she turns to face Vaughn from where she's standing she looks up at the wall and she says 
uh, guys, you need to look behind you and look up. Turn around as she says that and look up. You turn around to see yet another magic mirror behind you all broadcasting this entire ordeal as it takes place yet the events that are transpiring on that screen heavily heavily contradict what is actually happening henry just starts laughing maniacally you know i tell vaughn actually while i'm telling vaughn i'm gonna roll intimidation at this point, I don't care what the public thinks, what we're doing, what lies you you create. Because by the end of the day, you're going to be six feet under the dirt. Henry, mind tell Diablo, can you switch it to the proper? I've been trying to do that this entire time, and it has not been any degree of successful. Just focus on that. Don't worry about me. And after you say that, Osiris then joins you all as she says that the... Well... <clears throat> this... Bastard is very good at image and mental manipulation magics because the populace in the other districts that are not this one are very heavily convinced that you all have been savagely attacking everyone in the room. Meanwhile, those here are, I'd say about five minutes away from rioting and destroying the place in opposition as Vaughn's special forces team arrived onto the scene with no one's authentication and are trying to manipulate the story so that he looks like the good guy and you, that you all continue to look like the bad people. She says as she summons her weapon, ready to put it to use. Well, Yashua just shrugs, I don't care, since by the end of it all, history is ridden by the victor as I point my weapon towards him. And when you say that, you see what looks like noise. Uh, begin to circle around Vaughn as the flow of time is starting to resume around him where he stands. Henry screams out to Dreva, Dragon Brooch. And Dreva wastes no time uh, planting her feet in the ground Taking a very, very deep breath as she ever so famously screams at the top of her lungs. At the same time, Henry gets in position, counter to her, and does the same thing. And those that did not who had no knowledge of uh, huh, the ability that you all were doing, their ears are in eternal suffering, as per everyone viewing the broadcast. Meanwhile, the party, since this has happened so many times, they no longer have to deal with the saving rolls or take any damage from this. Diablo, on the other hand, does make mention that that was extremely loud for human, well, an almost half demon and a vampire to make with their lungs alone. And 
as the flow of time resumes around Vaughn, he seemingly doesn't react to it, except for him running his hand through his hair and scratching his ear. That's been quite an itch. And when you say that, he responds with, well, when there is an itch that needs to be taken care of, it's kind of hard to do that when you're stuck in time stasis, isn't it? I just shrug. <laughs> and he looks across the room, sees that he appears to be at a disadvantage, then he notices Diablos and his expression changes from a calm, collected demeanor to a expression of anger. And then he says, if you're here, that means one of two things. Either I have no winning stake in this, or you all have met up with a certain resident of time and space. It took you that long to notice? Wow. Hmm. Well... There is one last thing I could do. And after saying that, he snaps his fingers. And the man standing to his right is forcefully moved and is currently being held in a chokehold uh, above where he stands. And so is Francesca's mother. These two individuals know far more than what they should be allowed to know. And because I know that none of you could get both of them free at the same time, there's a choice placed before oh, you. Guys, this freaking geek green goblin shit. Make your I choice, Spider-Man. Henry just walks up to him. Uh, you approach him, and you are immediately met by a barrier. I knock on the barrier. What kind of barrier is it? Fancy. This... Is it like a protection barrier? Uh, it is a one-way barrier in, one way in, no way out. One way in, no way out. No, no, correction. One person out, everyone outside, no one else inside. Henry's just super pissed. He pulled out Diablo's book. I'm sorry, Diablo's. Opens the whole book and just looks at him. So, let's see how strong your barrier really is. Henry just grabs a bunch of pages and crumples them up and oh rips them out of the book. Please roll a D100. So this circle's a barrier? Yes. Hmm. 53. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Now give me a 1d4. Okay. 
when you do that, the air itself around you begins to rumble and shake as this entire room is beginning to shake as if an earthquake is happening in this very moment and the ceiling begins to crumble it almost feels as if this entire space is being raised off of the ground and the longer this continues then you start to see orbs of varying sizes and colors and shapes begin to form into the air and they all begin raining down on Vaughn's barrier and the longer they rain down the harder their intensity becomes and there are few cracks here and there in the barrier and the longer this continues all at the same time the room the very hall that all of you are in begins to rise further and further and further and further into the sky and before long the ceiling completely crumbles yet due to the magic orbs flying all over the place the debris is shattered as you now find yourselves levitating above the city all of your allies associates and civilians that you are helped can now see the situation for what it truly is and eventually the barrier is broken and uh, the magical resonance from said breaking enables Jin and the man known as Urias enough time to escape his grasp and when that happens the two that were not unconscious begin to fall off of the now arena platform and Zero's drones catch them in the nick of time just before they hit the ground and with that having been established everything is now in very <laughs> very plain sight for the truth of the scenario happening because you never established that the magic mirrors displaying your memories have been dispelled and everyone can see what actually happened in all of this. Unfortunately for you, Vaughn, when light casts a illuminating light, you hide in the shadows. However, this time, when light and darkness sets their eyes on you, then there is truly nowhere else to hide. I materialized the rifle that I got from Alexander. And when you say all of that, Vaughn takes a moment to examine the area and the situation that he's in around him. And you don't hear him see or say anything of note. You instead feel the ground by his feet start to shake. And the longer it goes on, the more intense it gets. And this shaking is stronger than that even of when Henry tore out page after page after page of Diabolus' book and casted them in anger amidst his rage. And while that happens, you see him begin to 
slowly and almost painfully begin to shape shift into a different form starting with his hair as it changes from white to gray to black before starting to fall out one thread of hair at a time and eventually the body that used to be there is slowly crumbling yet also growing in size and then it vanishes and the remains of what is there begin to coagulate into a new monstrous almost demonic like form and then and then you hear a roar a roar unlike anything you've heard so far in your journey as there is now a dragon right in front of you resonating in an energy unlike that which you've ever sensed before in your entire life as its sights are set upon you and everything in front of it So this is does this mean I don't get my monocle? Fucker, turn into a dragon. Riku, let's say for comedy's sake that the dragon still has the monocle on him. I guess, okay. this was set up to be like an extra ultra serious moment dude you know it's me <laughs> it's serious if he has a monocle <laughs> it's, it's, yeah dude it's super serious when he has a monocle I'm okay, terrified of that okay, monocle okay okay What are you doing with your limit break? Try and set up something. Continuing on, uh, this will be explained in the next session as this session is coming to a close. But for the entire duration of this coming battle, every single person you have met over the course of arc 2 and 3 that is an ally will be able to assist you in this battle. Hey! And with that being established, the new gameplay uh, mechanic will be discussed in between sessions and at the start of the next session as this one is now ending. Get your fake spawn ships out now. Bye, Rich Wallet. I live in your walls. <laughs> and...